Hey guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to cover subtopic 3.2 on alcohols. This is our first science understanding. Alcohols are classified as primary, secondary or tertiary. You'll need to be able to identify, name systematically and draw structural formulae of alcohols containing up to eight carbon atoms in the main chain with side chains limited to a maximum of two carbon atoms as well as one or more hydroxyl groups. To start off, we can say that alcohols all consist of this hydroxyl functional group. A hydroxyl group consists of an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen, and then this itself is bonded to a section of the carbon chain. We can say the hydroxyl group is a very polar group, so this means that it can form hydrogen bonds with other alcohol molecules at the same site, but it also means it can form hydrogen bonds with water this is something we might use to help explain physical properties of alcohols. Some examples of alcohols include ethanol, which we know are used in alcoholic beverages. Cholesterol is another example of an alcohol, and we know that it helps form part of the structure of the cell membrane within living things. One more final one is menthol here. Menthol is a compound which we can find in mint and it's used often in things like toothpastes, um, mouthwashes, chewing gum, uh, as well as topical creams. Next, we're going to consider how we can classify alcohols. There are essentially three different types of alcohols. Firstly, we have what we call primary alcohols. We have secondary as well as tertiary. And to understand the difference between them, you have to look at the carbon which is bonded to the hydroxyl group. We say that we have a primary alcohol when the carbon bonded to the hydroxyl group is bonded to one other carbon atom. We can refer to this as an alcohol group which represents a carbon or a section of a hydrocarbon chain. A secondary alcohol, so it has a carbon which is bonded to a hydroxyl group, is in turn bonded to two other carbon atoms or alcohol groups, and a tertiary has a carbon bonded to a hydroxyl group in turn bonded to three other carbon groups or alcohol groups. In regards to the systematic naming and drawing of alcohols, this is something that we have covered previously in stage one chemistry in subtopic 3.3 hydrocarbons. I've put in there that you can see 3.3.4 uh, alcohols, part one of two. And as you can see below in green, those are the aspects that you'll need to be able to do. For the last section of this video, we're going to consider this science understanding. Primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols behave differently with oxidizing agents. You need to be able to describe how primary and secondary alcohols can be distinguished from tertiary alcohols by their reaction with acidified dichromate solution, and predict the structural formula or formulae of the product or products of dichromate oxidation of a primary or secondary alcohol given its structural formula. To look at how we can distinguish between alcohols, we're going to be looking at the reaction with acidified dichromate, which is represented as such. So we have H plus representing the acidic component and the dichromate ion being Cr2O7 2 minus. If acidified dichromate reacts with alcohols, it gets converted into chromium-3 ions. So Cr2O7 2 minus goes to produce Cr3 plus, and this corresponds to a particular color change. So dichromate solution is orange in color, and then this can form chromium-3 ions, which are green in color. We know that primary and secondary alcohols are the only alcohols which can be oxidized by acidified dichromate. In turn, we say that dichromate ions end up becoming reduced to chromium-3 ions. From this, we can look at how we can balance this redox half equation. So Cr2O7-2- to Cr3+. Um, just as a bit of a recap, firstly, we balance any atom other than hydrogen and oxygen. So we balance the chromiums. Next, we balance the oxygens by adding the appropriate waters to the right side. And from there, we then look at balancing hydrogens by adding H+, which is where the acidified component comes into play. And then as a last step, we look at balancing charge by adding electrons. So... This would represent the half equation for the reduction of dichromate to chromium-3 ions. We're going to start off by looking at primary alcohols and how they can be oxidized by acidified dichromate. This occurs in two stages. So a primary alcohol firstly can react and become oxidized to form an aldehyde, and then it can further react and further oxidize with acidified dichromate to produce a carboxylic acid. 
One thing to note is that we've defined oxidation as a loss of electrons, an increase in oxidation number, but in organic chemistry we can often associate it with an increase or a gain of oxygen and or a loss of hydrogen. So going from a primary alcohol to an aldehyde, we can see that this compound has actually gained an additional bond with an oxygen, as well as it's lost two hydrogens to form our aldehyde. And then going from an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid, we can see that this hydrogen becomes an OH, so we've got a gain of oxygen there. So you can use that as a bit of a guide to determining whether substances have undergone oxidation. Reduction would be the opposite of what I've mentioned earlier. Now to look at both secondary and tertiary alcohols, we know that secondary alcohols can be oxidized by acidified dichromate, but this only occurs in one stage. Secondary alcohols get converted to a substance called a ketone. So this carbon with the hydroxyl group, we can see has lost this hydrogen as well as this one here. And in turn, it has gained an additional bond to an oxygen. So it's kind of like two oxygens bonded to carbon. And uh, therefore we can say it's been oxidized to produce this ketone functional group. Tertiary alcohols, on the other hand, we know are unable to be oxidized because if we think of oxidation as a gain of oxygen and a loss of hydrogen, this carbon has no hydrogens that it essentially can lose, and therefore it can't gain another bond with an oxygen. We know that carbon can only form a maximum of four covalent bonds. We would be able to track these changes by looking at the color change in acidified dichromate. So knowing that primary and secondary alcohols can be oxidized, whereas tertiary alcohols cannot be, then we will notice that the orange dichromate color will actually change to a green color owing to the presence of green chromium 3 plus ions. Whereas with our tertiary alcohol, this is unable to be oxidized. So we would have this orange dichromate color persisting with our tertiary alcohol. We have an example question here. Determine whether the following compounds undergo a reaction with acidified dichromate solution. And if so, draw the structural formula or formulae of the product or products. This is the first part, and the first thing that we should do is identify what type of alcohol it is. We can see that this is where our hydroxyl group is, and so if we look at this carbon bonded to the hydroxyl, it in turn is bonded to two other carbon atoms, so we can see here that this is a secondary alcohol. We know that secondary alcohols can oxidize in one stage to form a ketone, so through the addition of acidified dichromate, we can convert the secondary alcohol into a ketone. Here are our next two examples. So part B, again, we've got another alcohol. And what we can see is that this carbon bonded to the hydroxyl group is bonded to one, two, three other carbon atoms. That makes it a tertiary alcohol. So we already know that tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized. And for part C, We've got here a carbon bonded to a hydroxyl group is only then in turn bonded to one other carbon atom. This is a primary alcohol, and we know that primary alcohols can oxidize in two stages. So firstly, with the reaction with acidified dichromate, we can convert this primary alcohol into an aldehyde. So this carbon here ends up forming an aldehyde functional group. And then this can further react and oxidize to form a carboxylic acid and this is shown here. This carbonyl group, or this aldehyde functional group, then gets converted into a carboxyl functional group. That concludes 3.2 in alcohols. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.